All right, welcome back. So to continue our discussion about partial derivatives, I want to talk about how we would interpret partial derivatives based on the graph. So interpreting partial derivatives graphically. So the way I want to do this is to compare the three-dimensional model to some level curves and just talk about the rate of change at different points on there. So I'm going to return to this shape I've used a couple of times now. It's a Pringle looking thing. Looks like a Pringle chip is how I keep describing it. Um, it's maybe like a saddle is another way to talk about it. Okay, so what we're going to do is with the partial derivatives, we're talking about looking in the x direction or the y direction. So let's look at the x direction first. So the positive x axis kind of comes up and out here. And so the positive x direction, it looks like we're going up. So it'd be increasing in some way going in that direction. And we can compare this to then the level curves and we should find the same thing. So going in the positive x direction along the level curves, we are going up in terms of the level curve. So if these were labeled, it'd be like zero, one, two, and three. And so as we start in the center and walk up, we're getting higher. We're going from zero to one, one to two, two to three. And so we are going uphill or increasing along that direction. So we'd be increasing going in this way. And so this would mean that the partial derivative with respect to x, that's the rate of change in the x direction, would be positive. Or we could write f of x is greater than zero. I guess f sub x, I shouldn't be saying f of x. The partial derivative with respect to x is positive greater than zero. Now we can look at going in the y direction. So here, going in the y direction, I'm noticing that we kind of go like down, oops, we go downhill here, so we're kind of falling off the edge. And so this should look the same as when we look at going in the positive y direction on these level curves. So here we're starting at this zero point, and we'd be going to like negative one, negative two, negative three. So these would be going downhill or decreasing as we go positive on the y. And so this means that the partial derivative with respect to y is negative since we're going downhill or decreasing. So f of y is less than zero. Sorry, f sub y, I keep saying that. Okay, so this sort of tells us that we can read the level curves or the contours in order to help us understand the partial derivatives. So this is going to be one of the activities we have to do is given some level curves, let's determine some things about the partial derivatives. So let's try it out on this same shape. And just to help us out as a reminder, um, if we think about zero as being this first level curve, we go uphill as the colors get lighter and then we go downhill as the colors get darker. So I'm just labeling some of those level curve heights for us. And we have an x and y axis here, and you can think about the z axis kind of coming straight out of the page if we were looking down on the graph. So first, I want to just ask, what is the sign of, let's look at our partial derivative with respect to x and our partial derivative with respect to y at some point. So let's look at at the point negative two, zero, and then whatever the z value is. And sorry, we actually don't normally write that since our x and our y are input, so I'm gonna write like at negative two, zero, where negative two is the x and zero is the y. Okay, so we look at our graph, we go to negative two, zero, that is right here. And we want to look at the change in the y and the change in the x and decide if it's increasing, which would be positive, or decreasing, which would be negative. So looking at the y, sorry, looking at the x first, we go in the x direction. We're starting at a curve that has a height of 1, if we match it to the other side. And then we're going downhill because we're approaching this curve that has a height of 0. So this one, since we're going downhill, my derivative with respect to x would be negative. Okay. Yeah, I think I swapped my colors. I'm going to swap them just because I want them to be consistent. So this, we're looking at the pink one. 
same for here. Okay. All right, then we can look in the Y direction. So it's going straight up. And so here something is kind of unique is happening. So we are walking tangent to the contour. So the contour is kind of here and we're walking tangent right along it. And so at that point, the partial derivative is actually zero. And that's because we're tangent to the contour. So you could imagine some other places where we're tangent to the contour. Anywhere where we're sort of walking directly along the contour, those are going to have partial derivatives of zero. Okay, that was the first thing I wanted to do. Let's change this up and let's look at a different point. So this time, let's look at the point zero two. Oops, and zero, I'm going to do zero negative two. All right, so let's put zero negative two on there. We're right here. And first, let's look at the rate of change in the x direction. So there we go. We're actually tangent to the curve or the contour here again. So the partial derivative with respect to x is zero. Then when we look at the partial derivative with respect to y, we're going from this curve we're at, which is like a negative one, and we're going uphill to one that's a zero. So I'm matching that to what we wrote before. And so you can think we're going uphill here. And so my derivative with respect to y is going to be positive since we're increasing. Okay, so that just is a little bit of like how we can choose some points on the graph and talk about the rate of change in different directions just by looking at the level curve. So there's that. Then I just have one more prompt for you. Let's say, um, let's find a point where the partial derivative with respect to x is positive. So we want to have a place where when we go in the x direction, we are going uphill. So we're going in an increasing fashion. So I'm noticing that if we go from somewhere, um, let's see, we take this point here at 2, 2. When we go in the x direction, we are going uphill since we're going sort of up from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 on these level curves. And so this point, and actually I drew this in the wrong color again, just to keep it consistent, this one has a positive x direction change. So I would say 2, 2 would be a point that when we go in the x direction, the partial derivative is positive. So we could take this and choose really any point as long as it's sort of up here in this part where we are going along the positive x direction and it is um, going uphill as we follow those level curves. Okay, so that's just one of the things we can do. We can look at a contour plot with level curves and talk about the rate of change in different directions. I find this to be like particularly challenging just to keep track of like what's up and what's down. So give yourself some patience as you're working through these problems for the first time. So this is what we did with the graph. And I just want to confirm that we can do this with the algebra of finding the partial derivatives. So let's go over that really quick. I just want to confirm that this all works in the way we think it should. So we should be able to confirm these things all of our answers algebraically. Okay, so remember we have the function f of x, y, and it's x squared minus y squared. And so we're just going to talk about those points that we had labeled previously. I had negative two, zero, zero, two, and two, two. And we made some conclusions about the partial derivatives of each of these points. And we're going to find it algebraically and just confirm that we're getting the same answers. So we can look at the partial derivative with respect to x. That's 2x here. We found this in a previous video. Just remember y is considered a constant. So the derivative of a constant is 0. Derivative of x squared is 2x. And then this means that the partial derivative with respect to y is similarly to y. So we treat x as a constant there. 
So what I can do for each of these points is evaluate my partial derivatives at the point we're looking at. So if we're looking at the point negative two, zero, I can substitute it into my partial derivative. And so I plug in two for the x, sorry, negative two for the x. So I have two times negative two, that's negative four. And so this tells me that the partial derivative at this point is negative in the x direction. And if we go back, this should confirm what we had before. So the partial derivative with respect to x is negative at that point, negative two, zero. Then we can do the same thing for the partial derivative with respect to y. So we substitute in negative two for x, there aren't any x's, so we substitute in zero for y, getting two times zero, which is zero, and so this is the zero partial derivative that we also got previously. So the idea here is that if you have an equation to work with, you can do this all algebraically and it's fine. It's just kind of nice to be able to do it with the graph as well. I'm gonna leave this part up to you just because it takes some extra time, but you can go through these same computations, plugging in the points into both of the partial derivatives. So you can plug in two, two, and zero, two. And similarly, you can do it for the partial derivatives with respect to y. So I'm gonna just write um, the prompts out here so you could do that on your own if you want. You can find the full solutions in the notes. Um, I just don't think it's really worth it to go through them here, but you will get things that confirm the same conclusions we came to previously. And so this is just to show you that you can do this both algebraically or geometrically to talk about the partial derivatives. Okay, so that is it for interpreting partial derivatives graphically. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next video with some more complicated examples of partial derivatives.